How is everybody doing? It's your boy Flip Kiki here, your coach of the Hoboken Hall Luchas, and welcome to the semi-finals of HDL Season 4. I've never been able to say welcome to the semi-finals. Uh, glad I can finally say it after three seasons now of documenting this league on YouTube. But uh, after the fantastic win against highland last week props to him props to him for battling through having fucking covid check that video out in the top right hand corner i'm very proud of how that video turned out i'm very proud of how his team builder turned out and just the, the overall polish i'm just really happy how it turned out please go check it out favorite draft video i've ever made please show it some love but that aside we are now on to this week and our opponent this week it is spatula the two seed uh the coach of the lexington lanterns uh just to let you guys know tyler won his game and he was playing kalisto who won his game in the quarterfinals or in the semifinals game on the other side of bracket and on my side of bracket is obviously me and spatula so whoever wins this game will play either tyler or will play kalisto that game has not happened yet it will be happening after hours happen so i will not know my opponent until that game if i do end up winning and that is a big if because as you can see last time i played spatula it was a 5-0 loss he could have easily 6-0'd me i'll throw that video up in the top right as well but it was a fucking wash the spatula matchup is easily hands down my worst matchup in this league by a considerable margin it is very fucking bad like his defensive his defensive mons perfectly check my offensive mons and his offensive mons almost perfectly exploit my defensive mons uh it's a really fucking awkward matchup like no ifs ands or buts about it uh the only change in the matchup last time was i had rota mo instead of serena which was low-key better for me because an electro type in this matchup is so good and a good fire type in this matchup is also great however typhlosion blows so i'm not bringing typhlosion like i did last time as you can see last time i brought Odomo and typhlosion i also brought autono and mian Xiao, no spectre autono knocked off a bulk of zarud and i got swept basically uh mian Xiao didn't really get an opening to do it wanted what it wanted to do uh torn t was pivoting everywhere and i looked at the replay and i couldn't even figure out the age of slash or the riper items he never sent me a paste so i don't know what else he brought uh, obviously on the bench he also has mandibuzz jellicent glalie and ascent scorch if i can see any difference in what he brings i could see him not bringing riperior for possibly glalie or mandibuzz but he can honestly bring anything except the center scorch i think torn t keldeo zarud Aegis Slash are 100% coming. I think there's a chance Fortress doesn't come, and if Mandibuzz comes, it's Defog. So if Fortress doesn't come, then Mandibuzz is coming for removal as Defog. Uh, and if Glalie comes, that means Keldeo does not have a Garchomp answer. That's basically what that means. But they could both come, and Keldeo still might have a Garchomp answer. Uh, he established that Specs Icy Wind last time will Oko a max HP Garchomp. So that's something I need to watch out for. He didn't bring Lefty's Fortress. He brought Rocky Helmet. Uh, either, I mean, weakness policy autonomized Aegislash is a problem, but it looks like he brought like defensive special Aegislash last time. Uh, Red Period only set rocks down. I don't know what else it was meant to do. Obviously, Zarud was bulk up. And Torn T was boots. But offensive Torn T is also a huge problem in this matchup because I don't have any good things to switch in on it. So I, in this matchup, I quite frankly did not know where the fuck to start. I seriously, I had no clue where to start because I saw how last time, how unbreakable his team is for me. And I just, I just didn't know what to do. I'm being honest. I'm going to bring Spectre, even though Spectre doesn't do well in this matchup. But I had to figure out a lead. And for the second time, I'm going to be leading Mega Beedrill. However, this time, I'm clicking U-turn, turn one. I don't have any other real option to do. I don't have anything to do turn one. Uh, shout out to Sandy, because Sandy did suggest a set that I almost ended up using, but I'm not going to, but I didn't end up using it. I'm just going to say it right now. I don't see myself using it in either of the two matchups that I could end up in. Uh, he suggested uh, Flame Orb or Toxic Orb Psychop Murkrow, which... Would have been crazy in this matchup to status his non-cleric having team. 
but it would have just lost me so much defensive utility that I desperately need, especially with this Beedrill on my team, that I just couldn't afford bringing it. Uh, lead Beedrill, I'm clicking U-turn turn one. Something is getting chunked, because I need to chunk it for Spectre. Again, I'm playing to the Spectre win con. That's how this team is supposed to be played, theoretically, to the Spectre win con. That's how it's optimally played. So that's how I'm going to play it in this matchup. Uh, just as a spoiler, I'm bringing the exact same six I brought last week in the quarterfinals game. That this six is the best synergy. I almost brought Nian Chao instead of Bronzong, but again, I would have had zero defense in a game where he stonewalls me. I need it to be an even type game where he, like Nian Chao doesn't pack enough power for it to be an offensive option if I'm just going to step on the gas and make this like a 15 turn game. I can't. No matter how hard I try, if he plays solidly, I just can't do it. And he's a very solid, very safe player. I've noticed how Spatula plays. He takes the safe option nine times out of ten. So that's what I'm going to try my best to predict around in his play style. Predicting the safe option nine times out of ten. If I get burned for it, I'll start changing and predicting differently. But I'm going to be predicting the safe option basically every single time. Because especially in this matchup, he can play safe because his team comp just wins on preview against me. So I just need to play well. I can't really make any fuck ups or I just lose. I just want to make this close if I do end up losing. So I can have a shot at, you know, holding my head up high walking into the third place game. But enough rambling onto the Beedrill set. Uh, it's pretty standard B, except I have Endeavor instead of Drill Run. I can afford Adamant B this week as well, as you can see. Uh, the green number is for the plus and the blues for the minus. I haven't put the other quarterfinal video out yet as of recording this, so I don't know if this was uh, taken well, but I'm just going to keep this style because I liked it. Again, apologies for the rambling. But I can afford Admin B this week to outspeed Torn T. There's no really use predicting any Scarfers, especially because he didn't bring any Scarfers last time. He opted for a Specs Keldeo, even though he could have easily brought Scarf. So I'm not going to assume he's going to bring any Scarf this week. I'm just going to assume off the speed tiers I know and just bring Admin B. This B is basically only going to click U-turn. Endeavor, however, is for Fortress. Now, if B is chipped enough or is switched into Rocks a few times and U-turned out, a B chunked to this level, especially with how low Beedrill's overall HP stat is, um, I can click Endeavor and chunk Fortress a considerable amount. At least, at the very least, break it sturdy if Endeavor's going to do more HP than U-Turn roll or will get me more value than just knocking off the item will. Because the Gyro Ball from Fortress will just absolutely obliterate Beedrill. So there's no point in staying in on it. Especially because it's going to hand out Rocky Helmet Chip if he brings Rocky Helmet Fortress again. Other than that, uh, Beedrill outspeeds Torn T, clicks P jab, chunks Torn T. It is a the knockoff. I, Beedrill really doesn't click knockoff unless I know it's going to die and can't do anything else important. Uh, if I'm knocking something off, Beedrill's dying that turn is basically what I'm seeing here. Because uh, unless it's like, Col I mean, Colber, Jellison, Jellison's going to be Colber if it does come. Uh, and then there's other ghost Aegislash. Slash. I really don't want to knock off or use super effective move on Aegislash Slash until I know it's not weakness policy because weakness policy autonomized Aegislash Slash six owes me. So I need to be wary of that. But again, this Beedrill, it's Beedrill. It's just going to do Beedrill things. Uh, if it can clean late, it can actually clean late with PJAB theoretically, but that's not really the plan. But yeah, that's Beedrill. Uh, moving on to my main defensive option. Because if Beedrill leads on Torn T, I'm clicking U-Turn, and this is my Torn T switch in. Like, Special Defensive Bronzong does theoretically switch on to a Hurricane whenever it wants. However, the problem with this matchup, especially against fucking Torn T, is that a Bronzong in on a Torn T is a free knockoff or a free U-Turn for him, no matter what. So I need to figure out if I'm Stealth Rocking or Gyro Balling on the Torn T, Gyro Balling for Big Chip, or Stealth Rocking to get my rocks down because he has to bring in Fortress or something to remove them. Uh, rocks are nice. It helps out B, helps out uh, Chomp, as you'll see, and it helps out Spectre here. This is just pretty standard Stealth Rock, plus three moves. It's been at Bronzong. I needed lefties. Uh, Prim is actually not lefties because Bronzong is. Spectre is actually lefties. Again, you'll see. It kind of sucks that I can't show you all the sets at once, but Spectre is lefties because it is sub-hex. So... I needed lefties on Spectre, and in this league, we can only have two duplicate items, so I needed to change up my Prim item. Uh, I'd rather have lefties on Bronzong than on Prim, so I needed to think about how to recover with Prim otherwise. 
which you'll see. But this is a pretty standard uh, rocks plus three moves, Bronzong. Nothing really else to say. This switches in on Torrenti every single time Torrenti comes in. If he starts predicting with U-turn, I start switching into Prim. That's really, that's really all this is. Bronzong is here to... Bronzong is really here to help me from losing too much momentum early. It's going to die in the middle of the game, and I have to play without it late. Bronzong is kind of just here as fodder, but not really. It's just going to help me stay afloat in the early game and hopefully hand out a little bit of chip. That's really all it's here for. Moving on, though, we have Chomp. Now, Bandit Chomp is one of my only good offensive options in this matchup that covers a pretty decent amount of things because, uh, as you could tell by the team he brought last time in his bench, he doesn't have a fairy. So Chomp can click Bandit Outrage for free, basically, on his whole team, barring a good defensive option. So Max Attack Adamant Outrage is the name of the game here. Do I get outsped by Keldeo? Yes. Do I get outsped by Torn T? Yes. However, am I staying in on either of those things anyways? No. Chomp is meant to get pivoted into and click a button. I'm not outraging if certain things are alive because Chomp just fucking dies because they come into revenge it. Chomp needs to click Outrage smartly. It's mostly going to be clicking EQ or it's going to be clicking Dragon Claw. If he decides to predict with Torn T, that would blow. Or if there's a late game situation where I can actually win with Scale Shot if Chomp is fast enough to outspeed Keldeo or to outspeed Torn T, I'm going to do it. Scale Shot is the least likely move to get clicked here. Dragon Claw, I think, is the most likely. EQ, if I don't think he's going to predict with Torn T, and Outrage, if stuff is chipped enough or it's Chomp's Revengers are dead. This is just max HP, max attack with some speed creeping really all it is if he decides to creep chomp with something i have speed for whatever uh glalie is the main problem here uh glalie ice shard will kill chomp specs icy wind from keldeo will kill chomp so i can't leave chomp in on either of those things obviously i go to bronzong or for in keldeo's situation i go to prim it's really all that is but for the thing that beat me last time, I have Serena. Zarud is still obviously a problem. I haven't mentioned Zarud at all yet in this team builder. A bulk up Zarud swept me last time. So I obviously need something for a bulk up Zarud or just something for Zarud in general because Zarud U-turn and power whip fucks me regardless if it's bulk up or not. So I have Serena, max H or basically max HP defensive impish Serena at that. Uh, with speed to creep Mandibuzz because Serena does not want to stay on Mandibuzz or Serena wants to triple axle Mandibuzz before it can roost. That's the key. I want Serena to triple axle Mandibuzz before it clicks roost and loots its flying type. So I've crept Serena comfortably to outspeed a Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz with a little bit of creep hits like 98 or 198 with a little bit more creep. It's around the very, very low 200 range. So I just put Serena at a calm, flat 200 as much HP as I can muster with defense investment. That level of attack still does like 70% to a Mandibuzz with the three hit triple axel. It does like 70% to a no HP Zarud with a three hit triple axel. So Serena is still gonna hand out very healthy damage with triple axel. I had power up on this originally, but I don't see Jellicent really coming and I have Prim for Rhyperior anyways. So I don't really need Power Whip, especially if Serena is my main Zarude answer, right? I want something for Zarude. Uh, Serena couldn't afford lefties, obviously. I'm just going to run Boot Spin, and it has Synthesis uh, to regain some HP back so it can obviously win the Mana Buzz 1v1 if Mana Buzz at Brave Bird. And I also have U-Turn uh, to force Zarude out regardless. Uh, Zarude might U-Turn on me first. Serena's going to take a chunk. However, Serena out pivots him and is going to pivot on whatever gets U-Turned into next uh if sarud is in serena's in or if i appear is in i can also bring in serena to bluff serena can easily bluff a power whip if he does not know all four of my moves so that's also important moving on from serena though like i said we have prim uh prim is draining kiss salt scald sub combine because it, it has to be draining kiss because i don't can't afford lefties on this prim uh it has rindo berry mainly for Zarude. i wish 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 i could afford moonblast on this fucking pre-marina but i can't i need draining kiss for the hp if prim loses health it's just useless if it's sub call mind because it, it doesn't outspeed enough on his team so i need draining kiss to get hp back but draining kiss is shockingly powerful with this pre-marina set 
Uh, it's modest with plus 92 special attack. Uh, it has a little bit of defense. It has defense investment in the rest that's not HP. Obviously, as an odd HP number, so its substitutes are a little bit better. Uh, it's speed crept if something tried to creep my prim. Uh, and it obviously just has that special attack because with that special attack, uh, Draining Kiss will cleanly Oko a Keldeo. Or a no HP Keldeo. Oh, no. Draining Kiss will cleanly Tuko a no HP Keldeo. So that's important this thing comes in on keldeo no matter what even if i'm not spadef it's going to come in on keldeo so that's really all this is for he might start predicting it he might flip turn on it if he decides to flip turn on it i bring in chomp if he actually actively starts to flip turn i go chomp which is a bit of an aggressive play into a keldeo but i want rough skin chip and that's his one main option to uh threaten revenge on chomp so yeah, that's if he starts getting fancy. But Prim is my main Keldeo check. Uh, it's also my main Rhyperior check because, yeah, he doesn't have many switches to Prim, but Prim just simply is not fast enough. Uh, and Scarf Prim is just not worth it in this matchup because Prim needs longevity. I need longevity in this matchup. His team is too thick, and it threatens me too much back to uh, really afford a Scarf Prim with zero longevity. Like I said, Rindo Berry is for a Zarude Power Whip. Prim Marina will live one. Draining Kiss hopefully either kills Zarude or brings Prim into a range where it's healthy enough. And I could switch Serena into the next Power Whip or what have you. Uh, so then we move on to Spectrier. Uh, it's Lefties, like I said. Lefties, Willow, Nasty, Sub, Hex. That is the name of the game here. I have enough defense. I forget what the defense res for specifically when it comes to Aegis Slash Shadow Sneak, but it's for Aegis Slash Shadow Sneak. Uh, the speed investment is to outspeed a max speed Torn T, and I have it a HP for added bulk, and I threw the last eight into special attack because why not? Uh, Nasty Hex, it does enough. Enough. The team needs to be chipped, obviously. Uh, I, this thing does not kill everything when it's at, like, 80 HP. No, stuff needs to be in comfortable 2-co range. What I could see is Spectre either wisps something clutch and, Oko and kills it in a 1v1 to set it for a B clean, or I get a Nasty behind a sub and go fucking crazy. So, Nasty, I'm most likely, with what I've been seeing, I'm most likely not going to be able to hex something that is burned while I'm at plus two. I'm either going to have to burn something and then hex it, or I'm going to have to set up a nasty, kill that, and then go off the Grimne boost from there. It's optimally I'm wisping it first. It's gonna do less damage back to me, and then I nasty. It's mainly if I willow a physical threat, then click hex, or I nasty on a special threat, and then click hex. Preferably behind a sub. If he decides to switch into something that could take this. Uh, he doesn't have a reliable normal. Or a normal at all. For that matter. So. He has Age Slash. And that's really it. But if Age Slash is Will. It's just going to click Shadow Ball. Uh, I mean it has Shadow Sneak. And that's why I have that little bit of defense investment. But at, I mean that's that's basically it. So. I, this prep is again a little bit basic. Not much tech. Basically, the most tech I have is Endeavor on B Drill or fucking Draining Kiss on Prim. I'm prepping seriously. I want to fucking win. I'm playing to win. I'm not playing to be exciting. But it, it's not looking good. This matchup is very bad for me. Uh, sorry if I'm whining about the matchup too much, but it's it's quite bad. My my Tyler matchup and my Kalisto matchup are very manageable if I do win. This one is honestly the true test if I can make it to playoffs or not. If I don't, whoop de doo I play in the third place game, chalk it up to a good season, got a little bit unlucky in the playoff bracket. It be like that. But if I win, fuck yeah, I'm that guy, I'm that dude, I'm playing in the grand fucking finals. The worst case scenario, I finish second. I might beat myself up over how I play in that grand finals game, but I want to be there in the fucking first place. So... Without further ado, let's get into the semifinals battle. All right, we are here. Um, this is uh, it's 730 on a Friday. Uh, my work week is over and I am ready to get my cheeks 
clapped. Yeah. Um, this matchup is bad. He did bring Fortress, though, which is a pleasant surprise. He brought Glalie instead. Like I said, I probably said in the team builder, if Fortress wasn't coming, or if the most likely Mana's bench was to come, it would be Glalie. Glad to see Glalie is here instead of Fortress. I'm going to be honest, because Fortress was a problem to kill. Uh, I still lead B, um, obviously. Uh, music should have kicked in now. Uh, lead B on turn T is fucking rough because I don't know if I U-turn turn one or not. Uh, if this is Scarf Torn T, that fucking blows. I don't see him bringing Scarf Torn T over Boots, though. Uh, if he brings Scarf Torn T, that's cool. I'm going to be honest. If he brings Scarf Torn T and Hurricanes my Beedrill turn one, I can't beat a Scarf Torn T, but let's see. Uh, Mega, he's not Scarf, resisted 29%. We go Zong. Uh, this is probably a free U-turn for him. Hurricane turn one, only 13%. Uh, I'd say that's actually a pretty good turn, turn one. Let's calc that Torn T damage. Uh, U-turn to 29%. This Torn T is max HP. That is good details. It's actually more than max HP. It has a defense investment. Hello? That's a very interesting calc. This is, he brought a defensive torn T. That's really weird. I don't understand that at all. Uh, Hurricane doing 15 to 18% on Bronzong if he was max special attack. If he's not, he has no special attack investment. This makes me want to think he's defensive nasty plot or bulky nasty plot. I can easily see a bulky nasty plot here. Uh, Gyro Ball is huge chip though. It's either Rocks or Gyro Ball. This is probably a knockoff or a U-turn for him. Uh, I can honestly see knockoff, but Gyro Ball is a two-co here if he decides to U-turn me. Uh, I could see him going into many different things. Uh, I could get Rocks down here if I honestly want to. And we do know that, oh, uh, Fortress not being here means Torn Tease is Defogger. That's what that means. Torn is his defogger. So he probably bought bulky torn, which I'm not going to lie is an interesting bring on him. I do not. I, I would not expect that bring. Uh, if he's going to knock me off, he's going to take gyro ball chip. That's fine. Uh, so now he has to U-turn. He has to U-turn or lose his torn T. So this is an opportunity to either get rocks down or double. Uh, if he U-turns, couldn't I just go B? Can I go B on the U-turn here? And I get a free U-turn on anything else? Uh, he could just bring Torn back in, though. So that's actually for Torn. Um, he he U-turns here. Uh, this is Hurricane Knockoff U-turn Defog with Boots. I'm going to reckon that right now. Uh, he's probably U-turning here. Uh, knockoff did 37. That's that's normal. So U-turn. Uh, he's not running Focus Blast. He's going to have U-turn on this set. Apologies for the incessant calcing early. But U-turn's going to do 11 to 14 to Bronzong here. Again, that's ship I don't want to see. But he's probably going to go go into Aegislash, if I had to guess. But, uh, I mean, Torti's probably boots. To be honest, his team is not very rock weak, except for Glalie. So I don't see... Um, I don't see a reason to actually rocks here. Uh, Glalie could come in, but, or not Glalie, Aegislash comes in on this. But what do I have for Aegislash specifically? I don't have much besides Chomp. I'm gonna draw a ball again. He went hard Aegislash. Uh, it's lefties. Lefty's Aegis Slash, it means it's not fucking weakness policy, which is huge. Uh, Aegis Slash is in. Uh, uh, so what is he? Like, shield, he's defensive, maybe? Uh, it's balanced hack mods. <laughs> Oops. Uh, Lefty's Aegis Slash, if he is, if he's special, he'll just kill my fucking Bronzong. This is a pretty clear Shadow Ball, I'm gonna say. Um... Letting Aegis Slash in like this was a little whack, but Torn has chipped a decent amount. I was not expecting hard Aegis Slash. I was not expecting no U-turn. That Torn might be no U-turn. Um, Aegis Slash being in, this is either a Shadow Ball, this could be a Toxic, this could be a Sub, but we know it's not Weakness Policy, which is the big thing. 
that's the big thing here. The problem is I don't really have anything for this anyways. Even if, you know, I mean, I have Chomp. But if he tries to throw like a Shadow Ball out on Bronzong right now and he's max special attack, then Bronzong just dies. But that's also, uh, he, that's also if he specs. Uh, he has to be max special attack to kill Bronzong. And that's if he is special Aegis Slash. Does he throw out a Shadow Ball right now? And if he does, is that a good idea? Because Bronzong is another free Hurricane Switch at least. He gets at least one more free Hurricane Switch. Uh, if he decides to throw out a max special attack Shadow Ball right now, Prim switches in and takes 37 to 44, and Skull does not scare him out properly. Uh, well, how does Chomp do? Switching into this. Chomp does not like switching into the Shadow Ball, but it is... It's a... It's a free something. It might be a free Dragon Claw. Uh, Chomp would be a very aggressive switch here. I don't really know the play, uh, I was thinking about doubling into Beer Chomp, but see, I don't know what to do, personally. Do I just stay in? Oh, staying in and EQing is not a good idea. Um, I think he he could shoot out a Shadow Ball right now, basically for free. It just depends on what I'm switching into. Uh, Prim doesn't have the health to switch into it, and having Garchomp not healthy is a little bit of an L. Uh, Prim I need for Keldeo to stay alive, and I need Prim for Rhyperior as well, so I need to preserve Bronzong. So I think Chomp is my best switch here. Sub? Okay, okay. Sub is indeed a problem. Uh, okay, so he's Substitute? Um... It's, he's going to be sub. He's, he's going to be like SD. I think he might be sub SD. Which is a little bit of a problem. Especially if he stays in shield form. Uh, I don't want to ban myself into something I regret. Um, even if he, he could go hard torn T here. But I don't see him doing it. A sub down is a little awkward though. I'm EQing to get the sub away. Stance change into blade form. Shadow Claw does 35%. Rough, rough skin chip is going to help. Um. Now I'm in a little bit of an awkward position. He raw shadow clawed me. So now I know he's physical Aegis Slash. This is sub Shadow Claw SD. He might be mono ghost move. Sub Shadow Claw SD Shadow Sneak, maybe. Or he's sub SD Iron Head Shadow Sneak. Or he's Swords Dance with Dual Stab. Now I know he's lefties. Um, he might try and tack on an extra little fuck you here. Or he can go into... Or he goes hard torn T. If he goes hard torn T... Uh, do I just go hard bronze on here? aggressive hard bronzong uh he might king shield here he might king shield the scout which in that case uh does aegis slash does shield does a shield die to a b knockoff uh it might it depends on his investment if he's full offensive which he might be uh, if he's max attack, I hate calking against an Aegis Slash. He's 252, sh uh, he's 252 Shadow Claw against a against a Chomp. Shadow Claw is 27 to 32 if he's max special attack, uh, or if he's max attack, he does 30 does 35.2. So he's max attack adamant. Shadow. Okay, so he's so he's max attack. Shadow Claw. Um, so max attack, physical. Uh, switching into B here. If he just fires off another one, B's dead. Which would be an... <laughs> that would be an L play. I know I'm taking a little bit to calc here, but I need, <laughs> I need to make proper decisions. Especially in this fucking matchup. My team's already chipped too, which is just not good. Uh, if he goes Torn T on this EQ, Torn is going to be back in at like 60% and is going to get back up to full fucking HP. Uh, banning myself to the EQ is not the move. I should have probably banned myself in the Dragon Claw. 
and Torn would have switched in onto it. Uh, I think I have to go back hard Bronzong here. Is that the play? Or go into B when he goes into Torn because I've established that B might just kill Torn. Hold on. Um, he's max HP. He jab kills. Yeah. I go B on this Torn double. Oh, he went Glalie. Interesting. Uh, this is a Glalie Mega and Ice Shard. This is a Mega Glalie Ice Shard. How much does that do to my B? Uh, 47 to 52, that's fine. PJAB has a chance to just straight up kill him, but I'm going to U-turn. Rhyperior comes in, that's fine. 37% to Rhyperior, uh, that's free prim. If this is a fast Rhyperior, I'm going to lose my mind. Prim is in on... How much... Right, right, Rhyperior takes so much fucking damage from that. That's just normal calc, actually. That's max HP Rhyperior. Okay. Prim is in. Prim is in on a max HP Rhyperior. What is he going to switch into a Scald? He might be water... I think he's Waterberry? If he's Waterberry, I'm going to lose my mind. Uh, if he tries to switch... Yeah, this is, is this just a free sub? I need a free sub. Is a free sub on this rude switch? Yeah, we're chilling. Zerud is in. Uh, Zerud power up is going to break the sub, but draining kiss should be fine. Uh, I still technically 1v1 this, I'm pretty sure, with draining kiss onto. Because I'm at 76%, I should be able to live this. Taking this 1v1 does not seem smart. But I get a free Draining Kiss with this sub. Oh, that's a little bit of a weird thing. That was an interesting play. Huh. He went Aegis Slash as I reveal Draining Kiss. Uh, he could throw another sub down, especially if this Aegis Slash has speed. That would be pretty fucking scary if he decides to throw another sub down. Hmm. What's my play here? So it's sub Aegislash? Is it max HP? It's not. It lost 11% in shield form. So in shield form, it should be taking 10 to 11, so it's not max HP. That's good to know. It might, that might have been a min roll, or it has some HP. So then we go back to Blade with zero HP. Scald kills it. It's going to Shadow Claw me. Sub's going to go down, but Scald should kill Aegislash. Big kill! That is a huge early kill. Yes! Aegislash dying is so good, because his Torn no longer has a pivot. I adds a huge early kill, in my opinion. That's a big early kill. Big Scald click there. Nice. Zarud is back in. Uh, we go to our Zarud check. We go Serena. If he clicks U-turn, that's an L. But we go Serena. Uh, this is probably a free power whip. That's fine. Serena comes in. That's fine. 23%. We're chilling. Uh, he realizes he's not going to be able to stay in on this thing. Uh, so this, I think, is a U-turn on the Torn T. Nice. Uh, B's gonna come in now. Uh, B... B absolutely loves this. B absolutely loves this. I just clicked P-Jab. What does he do? He goes Rhyperior? He goes Keldeo? Uh, what does he do? P-Jab. Yo. Torn's dead! Yes! Big pivot and kill! Yes! Rhyperior comes in. Ooh! My goodness! Yes! 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 Rhyperior, max HP. Max HP, I'm U-turning. 40%. I'm U-turning as rocks are most likely going down. 
So I think this is more of a Serena pressure as opposed to a Prim pressure. I need to preserve B to guarantee the kill on Zarud late. Um, am I going Prim or am I going Serena? Uh, I s need Prim for Keldeo and I still need Prim for Zarud. Uh, if he throws a rock move down, I'd rather have Serena in on this instead. He puts rocks down. That's fine. This could be a spin. It could be whatever. Uh, I'm going to bluff the grass move. Um, what can he go into here? Hmm. Not having power for Keldeo is going to be a little bit awkward. I want to know if Triple Axel still has a shot to kill. Uh, I think I still get more value U-turning. He might sack this for rocks. And the, the funny thing is, I can't really kill this thing. Oh, and he goes Glalie? That's fine. Bruh, I missed the triple axle anyways. Um, That's a little bit of an awkward switch. That's a little awkward. I no longer need bronze on. I no longer need bronze on. He's going to mega. He's going to click return. It's going to do 28%. I'm just sacking Bronzong here. Uh, return, sure. Um, <sighs> what do I do with this Glalie? Mega Glalie. It's this is Wallbreaker Glalie. This is physical fucking return. All right. Serena does nothing. We've established this. Beedrill doesn't do as much. Uh, Chomp dies to... Chomp does not die to an ice shard. Uh, I just send in Chomp and click Outrage. Oh, Chomp's at fucking 64. Chomp dies to an ice shard now. I left him in ice shard range. Oh, no. How much was return doing? 28%? Yeah. Chomp's in fucking ice shard range. Oh, no. Do I lose? Do I lose to this thing? I have to go prim and click scald. I have to go prim and fucking click scald. That's horrible. I actually lose this Glalie now. Oh, was that a throw? Bringing in Bronzong like that? Sacking the Bronzong? I need a Bronzong for Glalie. Gyroball fucking killed it. I needed it to revenge. Ooh, not good. This thing just needs to get chipped in B for Beedrill, though. Because Ice Shard... Is Beedrill really in range? No. So Beedrill, it just, it, I just need a hit on this thing. Prim might force a switch. Uh, Draining Kiss does whatever it needs to do. So I'm going to do that. This is Draining Kiss, and it puts it in B range. It puts it in B range. That's all I need. Uh, does Draining Kiss kill Rhyperior from this range? No, but I don't need it to. Outspeeds, return, draining kiss. I win this 1v1. He stayed in. Uh, he is now in B range. Uh, Glalie. Return did 31%. Um, it is... Mega Glalie. Yep, 27 to 32. It did 31. Uh, another Draining Kiss does its job here. He goes Rude. That's fine. I'm, I'm getting a heal. Uh, he's about to try and power whip me. Uh, lefties is so awkward on Zarude. Okay. Um... Lefties is so awkward on Zarud, because if this thing was in Draining Kiss range, I would click it right now. But it's not. 
So there's no point wasting the Rindo. He could U-turn on me, but I'm going to go Serena, I think. Because he could try and power whip me. To be honest, I think B does win this game if Keldeo is not Scarf. If Keldeo is not Scarf, I think B can win. Um, B can't win if Keldeo is Scarf. Or if Keldeo... With, without ship on Keldeo, I can't lose Prim. Prim is so big still. I can't lose it. I can still kind of lose Serena, though. He is jungle healing. That is very awkward. Um, I've established I have triple axle. I also have U-turn. He, he doesn't stay in here. Is it for U-turn for me? Ooh! This matchup so awkward. He brought jungle healing Zarude. He's leaf guard lefties. Uh, so we know Keldeo can't be a weird lefty set. We know Torn was boots. Rhyperior might have been weakness policy. Um, Keldeo, Specs, or Scarf. I just don't know which. I think he still brings Specs so it can threaten Chomp. But Chomp has Outrage, and he does not know that. I get the U-turn on Glalie. Uh, that's... Is that all I wanted? Uh, I don't think that's all I wanted, though. Because... Is this B? Uh, is this B? Is this B? Uh, this is a U-turn. Right? If he decides to... Ice Shard me with B... In... Nah, that's just bad. Prim wins this 1v1. Um, yo, I click Calm Mind here. Unironically. He exploded! Ooh! He exploded! Fuck. Did that pr did that crit fucking matter? Did that crit fucking matter? I hope that crit didn't matter. Oh, the crit mattered. Fuck you. Crit mattered. I bring in Chomp and click Outrage. Oh no, I can't. Chomp is basically useless. And I have to pick who I bring in first. I don't have a Keldeo switch in. Ooh, that explosion's so awkward. Chomp is also useless now. Chomp is useless, because it's not Scarf, it's banned. Oh, Prim being dead is so bad. B is low-key my win con. But he also doesn't know Serena's entire move set. He doesn't know it ha doesn't have a grass move. Um. He brings in Keldeo. I'm spinning. I'm spinning because B needs to be able to get in multiple times. Because it needs to be able to hit this Keldeo twice. Is spin the correct play here? Yes, I spin. Because B deals with Rhyperior regardless. And spin... Spin plus U-turn kills Keldeo and then B wins. Spin. I spin against the Keldeo. I'm faster than the Keldeo. I U-turn out into B. B clicks P-Jab three times and the game's over. Pretty sure. Uh, I don't know if I'm playing this endgame properly. But I say that all the time. It's a spin. I'm faster than Keldeo. I U-turn on the Keldeo into B. Into hopefully B living. Into him hopefully not clicking Hydro Pump. I'll be able to calc on whatever he does. But this Keldeo isn't lefties, because he already has two lefties mods. So I know this Keldeo isn't lefties. He ends of rude. Spin. Rocks are off. Lariat, we live in. Big damage. 
Keldeo isn't chipped yet. Okay, um, I could go Spectrier, couldn't I? Um, couldn't I just go Spectrier? Because X should kill Zarude. Wait, is this max HP Zarude? Serena, you turn... I don't think it's max HP. It could be. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, so Spectre kills with Hex. It gets the Grimnay boost. Keldeo comes in. Uh, might be Specs, but I live whatever he is Specs. I'm going to be plus one special attack. Uh, and I do enough chip. So I go Spectre. X. Does he sack Zarude? Does he sack Zarude? He goes Rhyperior. He sacks Rhyperior instead. Which doesn't make sense because I have Grim Nay now. Uh, is this Specs Keldia? I just need this in B range. Choice Specs, I live a Hydro Pump from a Choice Specs Keldeo. Icy Wind. I'm slower now. Uh, That should be GG. That's GG. That's fucking GG. Holy shit. Holy shit. We're going to the finals, baby. Oh my God. Jungle healing. GG, oh my god. Holy shit. Oh my god, we're going to the fucking finals. Oh shit. Let's go. Oh my god, how did I win that? Oh fuck. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I hit my arm on my wall popping off, but holy fuck. GG's to him, but we fucking won. We fucking won. Wow. Wow. 30 turns. I think I made some really good predictions there. I Stacking Bronzong early was weird, but oh my god. Uh, I'm just going to cut to whatever the post-game uh, screen is right now. I don't know. I'm just in awe. He said he didn't want a post-game interview. I'm going to the finals. Grand finals. I'm going to the grand finals. I'm playing either Tyler or Kalisto. This is real, guys. This is officially real. This is the real fucking deal. We're going to the grand finals. Wow. Wow. I just... I'm, I'm, in, I'm in awe. I'm in awe. I was fully prepared to lose this game. Fully prepared to lose this game. But I played around his strategy the best I could, I think. Like, I knew basically what moves he was going to make at what time. Him sacking Torn at that time was weird. Him sacking Aegislash that early was weird. I don't know why he did that. But those were huge, and I took them. Ch Chomp was fucking useless, by the way. Bandit Chomp was such a whack bring. Scarf Chomp would have been much better. But, huh. I mean, Spectre with Shadow Ball would have done much better there late. But, like... It's whatever. I'm just beside myself right now. I mean, well played to him still. He still had a great season. Really put up, really put up a great season. Good showing for his first time in the HDL. I did not think I was going to win. I have two manageable matchups too. This is very real, guys. I, I just have to not throw. Wow. Um, hope y'all liked this video. Hope y'all liked the quarterfinals video as well. There's going to be one more, and it's a grand finals video. If you told me I was going to the grand finals at the beginning of the season, I would have not have fucking believed you. I thought I was washed. But this late, game, this late season push, I'm figuring out how to play with this team. 
wow, I'm ready. I'm honestly so ready for this. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just at a loss for words. I didn't think I'd be at this loss of words for semifinals, but grand finals? I don't even know how to approach that, but wow. Okay, uh, first finals all time for us. We will be going next week against either Tyler or Kalisto, whoever wins that game. Man. Yeah, uh, again, GG's two spatula, well played by him and well played by us. Uh, I'm happy with how I played this game as well. Fuck, to the grand finals we go. This shit just got real. Um, but until then, peace.